there's no hometown discounts. Everybody, me included, wants to see the Miami Hurricanes play well. You would be wrong if you weren't ex going with the expectations to win a national title. College football hates to see Miami good. Not just the fans, all the other teams are watching us. What are they going to see? What are they going to think? You know, running out to a stadium, 65,000. There's Florida. A million's watching on TV. We expect to go out there and win. We're one of the most hated teams in college football, and we feed off that. We love that. Welcome into Camping World Stadium here in Orlando, where tonight the Miami Hurricanes will take on the eighth ranked Florida Gators to kick off the 150th year of college football. This is the NBC6 pregame show. I'm Chris Fisher. Thank you for joining us. So much anticipation, hype, and excitement leading up to this matchup from outside the stadium with the tailgate parties to inside the stadium here on the field where the players were just warming up. All the excitement, though, in South Florida really leading up because of the new head coach Manny Diaz taking over the prodigal son the son of a former Miami mayor in his first game here as the Canes head coach as he tries to bring the U back to glory and the same can be said for the Gators head coach Dan Mullen in his second season in Gainesville. It's a rivalry stemming back to the 1930s nearly sibling in nature Mostly sons of the Sunshine State have collided on the gridiron, representing two violent forces of nature, the Hurricanes and the Gators. And at their peaks, the road to the national championship was decided by getting past the University of Miami and the University of Florida. I used to say whoever won the state championship usually had the inside track for the national championship, and that's gone away for whatever reason, but there's no reason why that can't be um, the rule of law again. Tonight, under the national spotlight, the Hurricanes and Gators will clash to kick off the 150th year of college football. Sport may not have been invented in this state, but it was certainly revolutionized in this state. I think you're talking about 11 national championships in less than the last 40 years. That's over a quarter by my math. And, and to have, uh, have two of the, the marquee programs in this state open up the, the curtains on the 2019 season is a pretty cool thing that we're just um, excited to be a part of. And as orange and green collides with orange and blue, it'll renew a rivalry that has seen numerous Hall of Famers, many of which will be on the sideline amongst the over 60,000 in the stands and the millions watching at home. You know, being in this city with so much, you know, history and things like that, it's hard to stay focused when you can go to a Winn-Dixie and the fan will want to give you the illustrious history of Miami and why this game is so important. You know, a lot of outside noise, a lot of doubt and things like that. So I think focus is the best thing that we have right now. It's not just the fans. All the the other teams are watching us. What are they going to see? What are they going to think? What, what's our stamp? You know, and everybody, every college football person in the country turns on that game. What are they going to see? What are they, what's their thought? An underdog in his first game at the helm as Hurricanes head coach, a son of Miami, Manny Diaz and his Canes are facing a tough test in the seven point favorite and eighth ranked Florida Gators. I know we're well prepared. I know we're very well conditioned. Um, we need to go play very hard. You know, they, they've got 13 games of last year's season, putting that on tape. Um, this is game one for us, so we've got to be able to match their intensity. And for Hurricanes fans, it's game one, the kickoff for hopes of a magical run for a head coach and the team from the Magic City. Services in the North and all that excitement has brought out the alumni, the former greats, that's Vince Wilfork in the stands. We've seen Alonzo Highsmith on the sideline and Manny Diaz. He has been the toast of the town when it comes to Coral Gables. The prodigal son from Miami trying to lead UM back to being the U. And tonight in his debut against the Florida Gators, he's got something to prove. Manny Diaz was gone. The architect of the second ranked defense in the nation, leaving his hometown for Temple. To introduce you to the next football coach at Temple University, Manny Diaz. But shocking news just days later, as Mark Richt abruptly retired as Hurricanes head coach, leaving UM Athletic Director Blake James scrambling. We need to move quickly. We need to get uh, a new head coach in place and, and have them have a staff ready to go. And as fate would have it, Diaz was on the UM campus preparing for a job in Philly when fate came knocking. Diaz turned down the Temple job to be the 25th head coach in Hurricanes history. Ladies and gentlemen, Please join me in welcoming the 25th head coach, the University of Miami, Miami Manny Diaz. 
the Miami kid who grew up a UM fan watching games in the Orange Bowl, the son of a former Miami mayor, now called upon to lead the once proud program back to the promised land. We knew there was a style of play, a style of play that was representative of, of the great teams, the great coaches that have come here in the past. So what should the Miami Hurricanes look like? Well, the very first thing we establish on defense is we're going to be tough. And in taking over his dream job, Diaz understands not just the culture of the U program, but the swelling enthusiasm to see the Hurricanes back on top. You know, I do sense that they're excited that, that someone who's from here that understands the culture of Miami football is in charge. Um, but all that being said, there's no hometown discounts. You know, everybody, me included, wants to see the Miami Hurricanes play well. And Manny Diaz in his first game will have a quarterback making his first collegiate start. Redshirt freshman Jaron Williams won the long eight-month de ordeal to be the starting quarterback for the Canes. In fact, Diaz had to talk Williams to staying at University of Miami after he contemplated transferring seeing action in only one game last season, but the Georgia native beat out incumbent in Kosi Perry and Ohio State transfer Tate Martell for the job. Diaz said among the three QBs, Williams showed the biggest upside with his accurate arm and his ability to run when needed to. But this is his first start against a talented Gators defense on the national stage, and it's an opportunity he's earned. I really give everything I had into the tank for them just to show them that I'm going to be a guy that y'all can rely on. So I feel like during that time after time, gradually built that leadership. So then when I was, uh, you know, had the opportunity to be named the starting quarterback, you know, I was already kind of in that leadership role. When guys go out and start doing their own thing on game day, because it's game day, they abandon their training and they usually make make catastrophic mistakes when they do that. So we're gonna just going to um, continue to coach Jaron about um, his every play focus and demeanor. As for the eighth-ranked Florida Gators, who finished Dan Mullen's first season winning the SEC East and ranked seventh, there's been a renewed sense of optimism around the boys from old Florida, mostly due to the uptick in offense late last season as junior quarterback Felipe Franks started to figure things out. The orange and blue averaged 45 points over their last four games, but it's a new season and yet an old familiarity. Hurricanes head coach Manny Diaz was Dan Mullen's defensive coordinator while the two were at Mississippi State. And as far as that familiarity having an impact on tonight's ball game, Mullen's got thoughts on that. You know, it was really interesting. I think Manny, Manny was with me when I was, you know, my second year coaching and then came back a little bit and was with me a little bit later. and Probably got to see some of the changes and how I tweaked my style. Uh, I imagine he took probably a lot of what we do with him, changed a little bit of our scheme and, and how we do things. So. And, you know, and I see that with him. He has too. So I think there is, you know, it's not like, okay, hey, he's running the exact defense he was running 10 years ago, and I'm running the exact same offense I was running 10 years ago. Now the Gators haven't beaten the Canes since 2008. And the last time these two teams played was back in 2013. The Canes have owned this rivalry as of late, winning seven of eight. A lot of great matchups over the years that dates back to 1938. Let's show you some of these here. Let's go back to the 2003 game. That was impressive. We have Brock Berlin leading the charge in the second half with four touchdowns to overcome a 23-point halftime deficit. Berlin mocked Florida fans with a Gator chop after the remarkable comeback. Number two on the list, the Gators ignite a historical run, beating Miami at the, at the Orange Bowl in 1985. It will be the final home loss for the Canes for nearly 11 years, as UM went on a record-setting run with 58 straight home victories and the number one rivalry showdown, the 2000 Sugar Bowl. It began with a brawl on Bourbon Street and a whooping on the field. Ken Dorsey threw two touchdowns as the Canes gave Butch Davis a W in his final game at the U. The historical rivalry creating not just trash talking here in the stands, on social media, all over, but even in our own newsroom. Jackie Nesperol, a big UM supporter, she's alumni, and then Shelly Munez. She's a Florida grad, Muniz, Shelly Muniz, a Florida grad. The Canes taking the field right now. But Shelly Muniz, well, she's a Florida grad, and she has some talking to do of her own, and they even had a little bit of help from Zoo Miami. Hi, 
I'm Shelly Muniz, NBC6 morning anchor and proud graduate of the University of Florida. And I say it's great to be a Florida Gator. When I was there, we weren't just dominating on the hardwood. We were also taking home national championship trophies on the gridiron. I was one of the official ambassadors of the school where my job was to give the campus tours and brag about the university. Hey, speaking of bragging, Florida has the best cornerbacks in college football, and I think they're going to shut down Miami's unproven quarterback. Hi everyone, I'm Jackie Nesprall, NBC6 anchor and proud graduate of the University of Miami. There's a big game coming up, the University of Miami Hurricanes versus the Florida Gators, and there's no comparison. First and foremost, the Miami Hurricanes five championships. And of course, so many Hall of Famers coming from the University of Miami, including a coach, Jimmy Johnson, thank you very much. What about quarterbacks? You're talking about Jim Kelly, Vinny Testaverde, Bernie Kosar. And then, of course, you've got The Rock. Hello. And then what about the turnover chain? Copycats all over the country. And then the biggest and the best of all, you've got the U and the coach, the head coach of the University of Miami Hurricanes, born and bred in Miami, Florida, son of a former Miami mayor. You can't beat that. And you can't beat the Hurricanes this Saturday. I predict a win from the U, 21-17. It's all about the U, baby. And Ron McGill from Zoo Miami has also an expert with the answer. So tomorrow's the big game. Gators, Hurricanes, huge rivalry. Probably one of the biggest rivalries in the state. Who knows who's going to win? The Vulture knows. His name is Peanut. He's going to be coming out here shortly. And he's going to let us know ahead of time where to put your money. OK, so here we are. It's time. Peanut. The Indian whiteback vulture, the only one in the country, is coming out to predict who the winners are. He'll be released by Marnie, watched by Jennifer, and here are the two helmets. Which helmet he goes to first will be the winner. It's tomorrow night's big showdown. Ready? Release the Kraken. Here comes Peanut. He's hopping around. He comes to Jennifer, gets a little bit of a treat. Peanut, it's time to pick. Pick Peanut. Pick, pick, Peanut. You're terrible. Yes. Peanut. Okay, Peanut says it's the Hurricanes, but I will say this for the record. Peanut has made four choices previously, and they were all wrong. So, here we go. Da -na 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 -na. Go, Gators. Da -na 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 -na. Go, Gators. The Vulture's wrong. Gators are going to the top, baby. From the zoo to the man that covers the zoo of college football, Matt Baker of the Tampa Bay Times joining us. And Matt, from a statewide, even national sense, Manny Diaz taking over the Canes. How is that viewed going into this matchup? Well, I think it's really viewed as just a big unknown. I mean, Manny is clearly one of the sharpest minds, defensive minds in the game. He's been pegged for years as a rising star. Co you know, came up with a turnover chain, but it's his first time as a head coach. And no, I'm not counting the 18 glorious days he had at Temple or whatever. Um, but he's done a great job of getting a lot of energy around what he calls the new Miami, the turnover chain. And really, I'm fascinated to see how the uh, uh, the transfer portal works out for them. Six guys on the depth chart, or the two deep that have been involved in the transfer portal in some way, plus some guys down the line, could go really well. It could be a bunch of mercenaries that don't quite click. We'll see. Now, I was stunned by a report you had this week. We were talking at length about this crowd tonight. 50-50 when it comes to the seats being sold. How much do you think that'll play an impact in this game, and especially for the Gators? I mean, their offense, people say it's better than the Canes. Yeah, I, I'd agree with that. I do think Florida's got more offensive talent and, and a little bit more experience. I mean, Felipe Franks didn't have a great 2017, had a very good 2018. I'm still not sure what he's going to give us in 2019, um, but he certainly has a not, lot more experience than Jared Williams on this other side for Miami. As far as the fan base split, I was pretty surprised when I saw some numbers that it might be close to 50-50. You know, walking around just earlier, that seems about right, but uh, what, we still got an hour before kick off plenty of time for there, uh, more people to come in and things to change. I mean, I'll tell you, it's impressive. Going up the turnpike, coming up from South Florida, all the Canes fans that we saw in the rest stops or on the road flying the flags, they are out in full force. This is Gators country, but with them going up against this stout upperclassman-laden 
Canes defense. How do you think the Gators will fare because the Canes, they're known for that defense? Absolutely, and Miami should be known for that. I mean, with Hickney, McLeod, uh, Quarterman, seems like they've been there for 50 years at this point. One of the best linebacking cores in the country. I really like John Garvin at one end. Uh, at one end. I remember him dominating Notre Dame in a great uh, left side of that line a couple years ago. Um, and, and Florida, is, you know, they've replaced four starters on that offensive line. So there's certainly, you know, I'm expecting kind of an ugly game because I have questions on both offensive lines, and I think pretty highly of both defenses. I think it's going to go back to that 2013 style of game. Very defensive, decided in the fourth quarter. It will get ugly because of those defenses. Matt Baker, the Tampa Bay Times. Be sure to follow him. What's your Twitter handle? MBakerTVTimes, and of course, online at TampaBay.com. Does a fantastic job covering college football. The Canes defense coming out onto the field right now. The Canes faithful in the stands, excited, and they've been excited since showing up here in Orlando as the two schools converge on O-Town. And you want to talk about the parties being held here in Orlando? None was bigger than last night, the playmaker, Michael Irvin, hosting a party. The playmaker, Kane's great Michael Irvin, got the crowd's blood pumping, ready for the showdown against the rival and favorite Florida Gators. Libations and a celebration. The turnover chain is out. Sebastian's on stage, but we're in Gator country. That's what the playmaker, Michael Irvin, is saying. No matter where the Gators are, Hurricanes will tell of everything. And Hurricanes don't care about what country it is when they swoop through a city. Orlando may be the Gators' backyard, but with a trophy in the house and a pair of UM legends pumping them up, these Canes fans are thinking much bigger, as in national championship. And it all starts in national prime time tonight. You about to show up and show up. Michael Irvin bringing the fire, but will his Canes, who are seven-point underdogs to the eighth-ranked Florida Gators, yet Miami has won seven of the last eight meetings between the two schools and the last three games on neutral sites. Will it be another upset, like in Miami Gardens back in 2013, or will it be dominated by the boys of old Florida like in 2008? Either way, tomorrow night, we'll break down this primetime rivalry big time. Coming up on Sports Final, following Sunday Night Football on NBC6 between the Steelers and Titans, and following NBC6 News at 11 o'clock. And before kickoff tonight, some late breaking news in regards to the Hurricanes' backfield. DJ Ivy is not here at the game tonight. He has been suspended for this game due to team violations. We are told that at this point, the, the Canes are thin when it comes to defensive backs. They only have four on scholarship, so that is going to be something to monitor going up against the Florida Gators wide receivers in this showdown. It's a rivalry that dates back to 1930. The Canes and the Gators in their 56th meeting between the two schools. The Canes lead the rivalry 29-26. We'll give you a look around Camping World Stadium as we get you ready for kickoff here on the NBC6 pregame show. Will the Gators close the gap with that win tonight, or will the U pull off the upset W? It's going to be a fun one. Two dominant defenses, two quarterbacks with something to prove, and two head coaches trying to return their programs back to glory. It's going to be fun. It's going to be rowdy. Orange and green, orange and blue. And we'll recap the game live on NBC6 News at 11. Thank you for joining us, everyone, on this NBC6 Hurricanes and Gators pregame show. Enjoy the game, everybody.